Hello, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist in practice over three decades. Uh, I specialize in psychopharmacology and also TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. And I went to Georgetown undergraduate school, uh, rather, Georgetown Medical School, and then I went to Columbia University for the psychiatry residency. Both of them very nice institutions. Now what I want to talk about today is acute depression as well as chronic depressions and the two different types of depressions, typical and atypical, and, uh, and the treatment. Uh, acute depressions are just depressions that come on suddenly. And some people have them recurrently, that they come, one fellow that I've been treating 30 years, I believe he had the first one when I met him, and then he's had about one every five years since. And in between, he's pretty good. Although now, he, he would tend to be you know, instead of a great big depression, he would tend to be in a mild to moderate depression, except we have him on some medicine that keeps him normal. So his is really a cyclical depression, and that's a lot like uh, bipolar disorder, like manic depression. Manic depression is cyclical, except you have big highs and then lows. And some people say, it's an artificial distinction because there must be something similar uh, happening with these recurrent sudden depressions. And they, using a small amount of lithium, would help as prophylaxis for preventing these depressions from coming on. Now, many times the acute depression is because of an event. A bad event happens and then suddenly you go into a major depression. Now, there's a big problem with that because then the bad event is something usually you regret and maybe you made a mistake and, uh, and that's what caused the depression. But then the depression makes you think much more negatively about what happened because depressions make you feel guilty, they make you ruminate about the past, they make you feel all of these things, so the event maybe should make you this feel this guilty, but you feel this guilty. And then you say, well, that's a terrible thing that I've done, I just want to kill myself, and, and uh, there's a high rate of suicide with something like that. Uh, I, w I once had a fellow a long time ago who uh, had a uh, small factory, or maybe it was big, I don't know, and he made a certain devices. And, uh, and then the market began to shift, and he couldn't sell his devices so well. So uh, he kept putting money into the company, because he was so attached to the company, and the community, and everybody looked up to him and his employees, and he remortgaged his house, and so on. But the company went under, and he was uh, extremely depressed. I can't remember how suicidal he was, but he felt completely hopeless, and the only thing that they had left was their winter house. And, uh, and he, his depression was uh, the typical depression where He'd wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning and couldn't get back to sleep. He was agitated a lot. His appetite went way down and he lost weight. And uh, you couldn't joke or jolly him into smiling at all. He was just in this pure depression. Um, so he didn't want to really take antidepressants because he says, I know what caused it. It's not going to work. And I said, well, you have to take them. And uh, back then, there were just tricyclics, and they were a little unpleasant to take sometimes. But in about six weeks, he was doing really well. And he says, the reason I feel well is not because of the antidepressants. It's because I've come to terms with what happened. 
and I realized we still own this little house, which was sort of our summer house, and all we have to do is winterize it, and then we could live there all year. And I've still got my grandchildren and children, and they'll visit me. So it's not, and then we can live on Medicare. And uh, also, these devices that I made, there's going to be people who will hire me as a consultant to help them make similar devices so that I can have a little extra income. And that's why I'm better. And then he insisted on coming off the antidepressant. And I argued with them, but, you know, you can't make somebody do something. You know, they're, they're allowed to do what they want to do. So uh, I had him come off a little bit slowly. And within a week or two, he was back in the severe depression. And then he believed me, and we got back on it, and we stayed on the medicine some months. And I think he, since that was the only depression he had ever had, I think we probably came off a roll of medicine eventually, and he continued to do okay. Although, in people over 50, and especially over 65, if they've got a depression, it'll sometimes stay chronic. So, if they go into a big depression, and you treat them and you bring them up to normal, and then you stop the medicine, a lot of times they're going to go down, you know, 10, 20 percent below normal, and they'll be chronically depressed the rest of their lives unless they're taking some antidepressant. It's just a fact. That's what happens. And if they're over 65, uh, then it's even more of a problem. And I, there was this lecturer once, and there was like 300 psychiatrists there at a conference in Germany. A very funny guy from Canada. And, uh, but the only thing I remember from the whole conference was he said, if you ever have a patient who's over 65 and they get the first depression they've ever had, never, ever let them come off an antidepressant again. Never. And then he did a very smart thing. He didn't say anything for about a minute. And so we're all sitting there, what in the world is he talking about? And it had a big impact. And he said, the reason is, is because if you stop the medicine and then they relapse, there's a one-third chance that they'll now be treatment resistant, that that one Prozac won't work, that you'll go back and they'll need three Prozac and Wellbutrin, and you'll have to add a little lithium, and you'll have to add a little thyroid hormone. And they're going to be a very treatment-resistant patient. Uh, now that can happen in younger people too, if they come off their antidepressants and let themselves go back into a severe depression. They have about a seven percent chance of it now being treatment-resistant, but a one-third chance is pretty high. And right around that time, I had uh, two people that that's exactly what happened. A 65-year-old woman, her first depression, after a year of doing great, it was hard for me to say no and we came off, but when she relapsed, the medicine didn't work anymore. She needed so much medicine. And then I had a fellow that was about 95, his first depression, and I treated him for two different depressions. Fine, take him up, but the third depression, he, he needed an enormous amount of medicine. What, whatever I used before didn't work. Anyway. So it's treatable. So, so they're treatable. Depressions are treatable. Oh, sorry. And, uh, but sometimes you should just stay on medication as prophylaxis. And a lot of people are very hesitant to do that. I've had depression since uh, for 30 years now. I've been on antidepressants the whole time, and they work. You know, so I'm lucky. But a lot of people don't want to take them. And some people are always taking less than they need. So what's going to happen? They're going to go to heaven. And then the then God's going to say, you know, I want you four to come up here because I'm going to give you a gold star because you never took any antidepressants or anti-anxiety agents and you suffered your whole life and, and made a point about not about doing things naturally. And then the next ten of you, I want you to come up here because I'm going to give you a silver star 
because you never took enough antidepressants and you too suffered your whole life because you didn't take enough. Uh, I don't know, that just doesn't seem right to me. I, I'd rather feel normal all, all the time. And, uh, and I'd rather my patients felt like that, even if they have to take, you know, uh, more than a couple of things. Now, the, uh, the symptoms of depression. Just so much. Uh, I have another question. Uh, regarding TMS, does it help to cure depression? Yeah, the TMS works very well uh, with depression. It's a little too bad that uh, it's hardly ever used as a first line of treatment um, because it works really well. And by the time somebody comes to me for TMS, they've already failed on a whole bunch of things, so already they're a person that's hard to treat. So then, depending on, on the... Uh, group of people that I happen to get at that time, I may only have 30% of them that come all the way to normal, which is still pretty good, because if they failed five medicines in the last six years and other augmentation strategies, the odds of the next medicine working and bringing them to normal is far less than 1%. So when we get 30% all the way to normal, that's good. And then another 30% may improve a lot and then another 30% uh, may not have much benefit at all. Although with TMS, I think we could get a much higher percent if we could keep going. And uh, if, if there's no response at 30, to keep doing more and then switching. Like I have two different machines that work differently, a Brain's Way and a MagVenture. And if one uh, machine doesn't seem to be doing any any benefit if you switch to the other they, they work a little differently and there's also different parameters but I've had a couple of people who it was their first depression and then we treated them with both TMS and medication right at the same time and they did really really well now maybe they would have done well on just one of these treatments but both of them have plenty of evidence so the likelihood is is that the person is getting better and is getting up to normal in a much shorter time if you're using two things uh, to treat them. And it's two completely different modalities. Thank you very much, Doctor. About the symptoms we're going to talk about in, in the next video. In the next video, I want to talk uh, both. more about the behavioral symptoms of depression and the two general types of depression. Thank you very much.